Welcome back everyone to Pine Leaf and Mordor. When we last left off, we were getting ready to confront Zorath to find out what plans she has and what she plans to do with the Ring of the Dwarves. Let's get going. And the king seems quite determined at this time. One king to rule them all and in the darkness find them? Your dwarf friend told me an interesting tale of Voskman, and one that I know well. Don't you see? It is the victory of his people that condemned you to the dungeons of Barad-dûr. You speak only lies, Zorat. In truth, you abhor my people. You never wanted to help us. Surrender, Manthrif and I will spare you. Will you now? Take it. You won't get far before the order kills you, and then it'll still be mine in the end. Come, take it. Boy, I wonder... What trick does she have in her sleeve? Or does she really think he's going to get killed so fast? Right, he pulls out the key ring. Key, key ring. It is empty. What have you done with that Zorath? What? No. Enough of your lies. Mantrif is mine. Oh, not another one of these. Oh, oh, of course she be. The ultimate how many fell spirits can I summon in a minute type sorceresses? I mean, really? Uh, what is she? Elite Master? Ha ha. Well, at least I've got a couple of dwarves to help me. Aether, the King, and Gimli. Staunch allies who will forever help each other. So this is what the years of wearing the Dwarf Ring of the Dungeons did to you. Oh yes, I know about that. Oh, so you're saying he's a bit envious of the ring? Well, I have to agree. He does seem to be grabby for it. You shall destroy your own people, Voskman. Even I could not be so cruel. Hmm. Whew, quite a battle. Manthrif is gone, lost, stolen. Zorath knew what Sauron did to me in the dungeons. How could she know such things? How could she know how he tortured me until I felt the hunger and greed of his forebearers? For how long have you and Gimli conspired against me? How did you make that jump? Durin's folk damned my people. How do I know you did not find the dark in the dark tower when I asked you to search for it? Month Reef is mine. It is mine by right, and none shall stand in the way of its return. Not even you and Gimli. Boy, has he come to some weird conclusions. Hearken to me, my brethren. This day we shed the name given to us by the Dark Lord in mockery of my forefathers. We are now evermore the Fire Horns, and Manthrief will be ours once again. That is the oath I now swear. These traitors and thieves, Gimli, Sparkarth, and Pineleaf are banished from our spire, the Oath Taker's Horn. This is the only mercy that I can offer you. Now, be gone. Be gone? Whew! Boy, that's gratitude for you. That's gratitude. Time to go, Pineleaf. Time to go. Feeling better, Sparkorth? Long have we toiled. For what? I am ashamed that I could not resist Zorat's sorcery, Pineleaf. 
I am ashamed that I could not even sense her deception. I have failed you, and I have failed Gimli. Leave me t if you wish. It is the fate that I deserve. And why should I leave? <laughs> what sort of dwarf is so easily swayed by the power of evil? I suppose that is a foolish question to ask now. Zorth may have planned to use me to betray my own king, but now... Voskman has forsaken us all for Monthreef. If this is the way of the Firehorns, I want no part of it. Oh, and I get some boots. And considering that my old boots are Madam Hunter's boots, <laughs> that's going to be quite an upgrade. Quite an upgrade. So it's hitting level 112, which means that I'll be able to get some ash armor soon also. What kind of thing is this? Gorgoroth loot box. You want to think about Gorgoroth loot boxes? That's why I think about Gorgoroth loot boxes. Just saying. Now, what do you want to say, Sparkhorn? Long have we toiled, and for what? Gimli has not turned his eyes from the spire since we were cast out Pineleaf. I wonder, does he truly believe a share of the blame is his? In truth, the blame lies within Voskman, Zorath, and Sauron himself. By Sauron's own hand, Voskman was corrupted by the ring, and he is now bound to it by pride and greed, as the Nazgûl were to their own rings. Gimli is a fine dwarf, and he has done my people no ill. He must not believe that his efforts to aid us were the cause of our sorrow. It was Voskman and his firehorns. As he commanded, the spire is now called the Oath Taker's Horn. What oath has been taken, I ask? An oath to bring ruin to our own people? Vosman may as well consider it fulfilled, then. <laughs> now, what do we have over there? Do you see the two of them by the statue of Sauron? Well, they're certainly not dwarves. Could they be allies of yours? Oh? What? Strangers? Over down here, you say? Well, let us go see. Two elves standing beneath the Statue of Sauron. And these are Spears of Linden, which you would have seen in the other series that I started with Mordor. It's come to an end, but the first couple episodes did represent a few things in the last alliance battle, and that included some work with the Spears of Linden. Hello there! What business have you in these lands, Hobbit? Did you travel hither with the host of men? Or is this land your... Do you really think a hobbit would live in this blanched up place? Speak at once, or my spear shall be swift. Ah, boy. If you want to know that I have been going all over the place, fighting as evil and sorrow and all that through Eredor, until I've reached this place under the commands of King Alasar. Now, who are you? Did you not hear? I said speak. Why have you come here? Okay, very well, Pineleaf. I am Mergoril of Linden, and my companion is Durnaith. We are among the last remnants of the great alliance in this realm. Oh, yes, you are. Well, yes, another character of mine ran into you. Yes, and this brought us joy and relief to learn that Sauron has truly fallen. Death has always eluded the Dark Lord, but I have heard that the ring is gone and his essence diminished to naught. 
I know not why Enmi would seek the Dwarf Rings or any other artifact that was wrought through Sauron's corruptions, but now the evils he has done to the peoples of Middle-earth might now begin to heal at last. I never thought I would look upon the plains of Gorgoroth again, but fate has brought me hither once more. You see, Durnath and I have returned to this land in search of our lost friend and kin, Felaron. During what you now call the War of the Last Alliance, our friend was taken by the enemy and borne into Mordor on the back of one of his winged fell beasts. Our efforts to rescue Theralon before he has taken beyond the Moran and failed, and in so doing we nearly lost another of Gilgalad's favored warriors to the corruption of Morgul steel. Even after Sauron fell at the end of the Second Age, we could not find Theralon in Mordor. He was hidden somewhere beyond our sight, and the enemy's forces still remained to harry us, and few as they were at the after the war. Thus, the search now begins anew. If Theron lives still, we shall find him. Yes, right. We are going to go on a search and rescue mission 3,000 years after he was taken. Whee! Durnath has been attempting to learn what the spirits residing in these watching stones have seen, that they might unwittingly aid us. But none have answered our challenges, other than this one. Durnath beheld a terrible form rise from the statue of Sauron, and it spoke to him, warning he would share the fates of the damned of the Mordath. I have never heard such a place in Mordor, but in the language of the elves it means Black Pit. Indeed, this has given us much to consider. Black Pit? You mean that big back black split that is next to Barador? I actually went into the depths of Barador and I think I saw that pit. Well, perhaps Durnath might know the fates of the Dwarf Rings you speak of, though. Mm, well, let's see what Durnath says and see if he is going to be any more polite uh, than his friend here. Hello. I am still recovering from the encounter with the enemy's fell spirits, and I am still exhausted. Allow me a moment, Hobbit, and we shall speak. Hmm. If Mogrel has not wished us to speak, you would not stand where you are now. What is it you want? Yes, uh, Marigold mentioned something about a fell spirit that inhabited the Watching Stone here, and that she and Durnade had come in search for an elf called Felderon. I uh, Also, the Dwarf Rings, apparently they're going to become important here because there is this Dwarf King over in the Spire over there who is convinced that he is the true heir of one of those rings, and he seems to be confoundedly obsessed with that stupid thing. Indeed. We have come in search for our companion, Felderon, this is a quest of our own, and one given to us long ago by the High King of my people, before he was slain by Sauron. As for the fell spirit, the one that rose from the statue looked a shade of Sauron himself. Oh, excuse me, I, I've got a goat here that seems to have decided to interrupt our conversation. Hey, you know this is rude to interrupt a conversation? I mean, really, it is dire rudeness. And, oh, you're, you're dire yourself. You're, you're dire horn. So, therefore, dire rudeness comes naturally to you. Okay. I'll take that into consideration at your funeral. Uh, now, where were we? Yes. I, hmm. Yes, the fell spirit. The one that rose from the statue looked the shade of Sauron himself, but weaker and less wicked in form. 
It was an echo of Sauron's sorcery. An echo of the Dark Lord. Uh, glamour, perhaps? This glamour told me of the Mordath, a black pit beneath Barador where the damned were imprisoned. And it also told me to leave these lands or I would join the Forgotten in the depths of the black pits and never again find my way from Mordor. I do not heed the warnings of such spirits, but these tidings are both good and ill. If Thelron lives, he may have been taken into the black pits. Thus, we would have never found him when last we destroyed Barador. He was hidden away far beneath the scorched lands of Mordor, left to pass an age in silence and darkness, and bearing whatever tortures the Dark Lord devised for him. I can attest that the tortures the Dark Lord will have for someone are vast. I got a Dwarven King here, who after years of torture with a ring, is now looming crazy. Yes. Now, to answer your questions concerning these Dwarf Rings, then, I have heard a few tales and rumors of them, but little else. As I have heard it told, they did not work as Sauron had planned. The Dwarf Rings granted might and luck as well as some manner of concealment, but they did not corrupt the Dwarves into servants of the Dark Lord as the Rings of Men did. Instead, the Dwarf Rings brought forth a powerful and insatiable greed from deep within the minds of the Dwarf Kings, a greed that bred in them a compulsion to seek wealth by any means and a hoard it in their vast halls. Ah, but other creatures were as fond of gold as dwarves, and so for some of the dwarf kingdoms, the rings brought them to their ruin. I'm afraid that is all I know of them. So I believe it is time for Megaril and I to resume our search and seek out the Mordath. Your allies here seem to have a great need of you. If our paths cross again, Megaril and I shall stand at your side. Okay. Whew. That was a mouthful. Well, Gimli, what now? <clears throat> I have made more than a few great mistakes in my time, finally, but... As any fine dwarf would, and as I always have, I put them to rights. The torture Sauron brought upon Voskman might not be undone, but there is still a goodness in these dwarves, a fair few of them anyway. The sulk here wishing of a different fate for the stout axes? That is not the way of a dwarf. The ring he seeks, this Monthreath. It shall not free him from his delusion and greed. I say Voskman must be convinced of his folly, or he must be brought low. This is not as simple a matter as it was with the Dower Hands. These Firehorns are not cruel or evil in their hearts, but... The promise of a dwarf ring's power has begun to chip away at their good sense. You and I saw what the ring did to Frodo, even in the short span of months that he bore it before our paths were forced to apart. If Voskman was forced to wear it upon the dungeons of Barador during his imprisonment, and then deprived of its power by Sauron, his mind may have been withered into an obsession. Although, being a dwarf, I think he may have fared a bit better than Gollum. Finally, I do not wish to raise arms against Voskman and his people if I can help it. Voskman may not allow us inside the Oathtaker's hoard, but that does not mean we cannot come to the dwarves of the Spire. <laughs> 
go to the hidden gate of the Oath Taker's Horn and summon the Fire Horns. Deliver them an invitation for Green Kratuth to meet us upon the field. When that is done, we shall speak in peace and of having some better dwarf sense. Will this succeed? Will we bring the stout axes back together, back into the fold of goodness? We'll have to answer that in the next episode of Pineleaf in Mordor.